Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we won't be talking about my dream reef tank, but talking about the cycle and adding a skimmer to my brand new UN Systems soft coral display. All right, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as touched on in the intro, today we will be talking about the cycle and also adding a skimmer to my brand new UN Systems R60 soft coral tank. And it's one of those interesting things because there is a heap of information out there on the internet on exactly what the cycle is. And it can be very, very useful, but probably also a little bit overwhelming and daunting. So in today's episode, I plan on giving you my version at least of a sort of a quick overview of what the cycle is, what we should be looking for, and of course, sharing where we are in that cycle on this brand new tank. So if you can throw your memory back to the last video I did on the UN Systems tank, it was some time ago, I had added some live sand, some live rock, filled it up with water, the tank looked incredibly murky, and since then all I've done is just let it run. Realistically, the only thing I've done is top up that ATO to make sure the system didn't run dry, and I have given it a few weeks. So I'd like to think that I'm somewhere into the cycle and probably not far off finishing. But you might be thinking, Sam, what is the cycle? What are you talking about? How many steps are there? And how does this help me get my tank ready? Well, let's dive right into it. So as touched on before, I like to think that the nitrogen cycle, which is exactly what we're looking at with our marine tanks and getting them started, is incredibly well documented online. And I highly recommend if you are starting a new tank, particularly if it is your first marine tank, take some time, pump the brakes, have a look online. There's some very good resources that I have referenced today to put this video together along with some of my experience of setting up tanks. But I like to think of a cycle of a marine tank basically to be covered in four steps. And we'll start off with number one, the ammonia cycle. Ammonia is the first parameter that forms when something rots in our tank. Now that could well be the addition of direct ammonia from some sort of reputable company out there. You can buy ammonia in a bottle. It could be the addition of some food or even a little bit of prawn, something that's uncooked into the tank, or it could be just waste from a fish. I personally don't like to use fish in a cycle because it's very, very hard on the fish. And typically we tend to pick fish that aren't gonna work all that well in the long run anyway. So with all of the other options available to us at hand, I like to start the cycle with either some bottled ammonia like I did with this UN Systems tank. I used some of the uh, ammonia that came with the Aquaforest Live Biosand. And I also supplemented that with a little bit of a phantom feed, which basically just means I got one pinch of pellets added that to the tank as soon as it was wet, that will break down and rot and create some ammonia and get that first step of the cycle started. Now, if you have an ammonia test kit or you have access to a local fish shop that can test your water for you and you're curious of what your ammonia levels are, go ahead and take some tests. You should see ammonia spike up fairly quickly and it will stay high for a little while. And then as you can see by the graph, it will start to drop. As soon as you start to see a drop in your ammonia levels, you should also see a rise in the nitrite levels, which means you have cultivated the first type of our bacteria, which is taking that ammonia and converting it to nitrite, which is still toxic, but we are one step closer. And we're on to step number two, the nitrite cycle. Ammonia when broken down by bacteria becomes nitrite, which is still bad and not safe for fish or inverts. As your nitrites rise, your ammonia will drop and drop and keep dropping as long as you haven't added any new sources of rot, whether it be fish or food at this point in time. If you're still curious, continue testing. You should see your ammonia come back down to zero and you should see your nitrite come up to a peak and then start to drop down as well. As soon as your nitrite starts to drop, you should start seeing a little rise in nitrates and then you'll be on to step number three. All right, now that we're starting to see some nitrates, hopefully our ammonia should be well and truly zero and our nitrite should be getting close to zero and continuing to drop by the day. Some people will say once your ammonia and your nitrite, the two toxic parameters there, once they are zero, you're safe to add livestock. And whilst this is technically true, 
I personally like to wait a fair while longer after our ammonia has hit zero and our nitrite has hit zero because I want to give the bacteria that creates that nitrate plenty of time to colonize. It's also very important to have plenty of oxygen in the tank at this time. I personally like to leave the ammonia and nitrite at zero for some time to give the nitrate bacteria a chance to really colonize. The nitrate bacteria will live deep inside the rock and in any of your ceramic media. The hidden bacteria consumes the nitrate and converts it into nitrogen gas as a byproduct. The nitrogen gas rises in the water column and escapes into the air. When one gas leaves, another enters and oxygen is infused with the water. Once you see your nitrate start to stabilize, that means your tank should be well and truly clear of all of those toxic parameters and will most likely be ready for livestock at that point in time. However, again, if you're not in a rush, I recommend taking your time because the next step is something that freaks out a whole heap of new reef keepers and also some experienced ones as well. That's step four, the uglies. Now this step can vary drastically from tank to tank and can also vary in how ugly things get but the reality is most people will see some sort of diatom, usually some sort of cyano and some sort of hair algae. Each one of these is normally driven by life and you won't see it until you get a light on your tank and you crank it up, which is something that I still need to do in my tank. Now, yes, you can have your livestock in the tank while this is happening. However, it can make things a little bit difficult and a little bit overwhelming. So if you're not in a rush, get your tank set up, get that light on, get those uglies happening and you'll find that the majority of them will burn themselves out over time. They'll consume up all of the materials they use to reproduce and they will effectively wipe themselves out. For some instances, you will need to add some cleanup crew just to tidy things up. But once it's all done, you're gonna have a well and truly cycled tank ready for a long and prospering reef. So with all of our new found information about the nitrogen cycle, you may be asking, well, whereabouts in these four steps is this brand new UN Systems R60 soft coral tank? And to answer that, really the best thing we can do is jump in the car, go have a look at this tank, test some water and have a chat to Dave to see exactly where we're at and what we need to do next. Dave, tank is cleared up nicely, I can see, and by the look of a little bit of algae starting to form on the inside of the glass, looks like the cycle yep. is underway. Cycle is definitely underway. I reckon we give it a good test, and we'll see what it's doing. All right, sounds good. Cool. How do we go about getting a test? So, install, we have the spin touch, so yep. I'll grab a bit of water, and we'll take it over to the counter, and we'll check it out. All right, let's go. All right, Sam, test us up. Salt, looking perfect. Excellent. I guess that is in specific gravity if it's showing 1.026. Correct. I find that just gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room rather than parts per thousand. Just be slightly more accurate with it. Excellent. And now we've got the rest of it up on the spin touch. So yeah. you can see the KH is quite low. Yeah, that's fairly low considering the water where I started with was around about 7.5 dKH at a natural salt water level. Yep, but it's very common during the cycle. Something that often gets miss, uh, missed by hobbyists. Uh, as the bacteria breaks down, uh, the bacteria is growing, feeding, the KH just gets used up. CO2 in the air, everything like that, everything has an impact on C um, KH. So we just find that by the time you finish the cycle, if it's not something that you're paying close attention to, it usually slows you up a week or two before you're ready for stock. Okay, okay. So that's something I would definitely need to take some action on before adding any livestock? Absolutely. We want that above seven at all times. Okay. And if we aim for somewhere in the mid eights, you can't really go wrong. Perfect. pH is looking great. Excellent. Phosphate's quite high. Mm -hmm. Again, pretty normal with a cycle. We did use some, some slightly cured dry rock in this situation, uh, live rock, sorry. So it is normal to see that die off, that decay, and that'll turn into some phosphates. Sure. Calcium's looking not fine. It's a little low, but a water change will fix that. Great. Magnesium is spot on. We're still getting just the hint of ammonia there. Sure. Um, but again, I reckon another week's time, we'll have no ammonia. We'll be able to fix that phosphate nitrate up, and we'll get that KH up as well. Okay, great. So. From here, you think it's probably worthwhile looking at something like a skimmer now to help to sort of finish that last stage of the cycle, let it really settle in, maybe give it a little water change at the end of that, and then we'll be looking good? Definitely. I reckon we get a skimmer on there, we give it a week or two, and then we'll hit the lights, and we should be ready to go. Sounds great. All right, so with all of that information and that water test done, it does look like I'm completely through step one, most of the way through step two, and ready now for step three and four. Ammonia has come and completely gone. Nitrites has come and is almost completely gone. My nitrates have started to rise a little bit, and I'm even starting to see a little bit of step four in the uglies with a little bit of diatom starting to form on the sand, despite the fact that the tank is only getting ambient light at this stage. 
Now, before really fueling on that ugly stage and putting a light on the tank and getting it cranking, I think that the next most important thing I can do to really ensure that this cycle is under control and that I can start to pull out some things like those nitrates and keep that water well and truly oxygenated is to get a skimmer on the system. So I have tasked Dave with the challenge of finding a skimmer for under $500 that will not over skim the tank, but not under skim the tank and also fit into the sump of the UN Systems R60. And also most importantly on this build, look the part. It's a beautiful looking tank. I don't wanna have some sort of ugly skimmer in there with bizarre colors. I want something with fairly neutral colors in there. And of course, I want something with a bit of quality. So let's pop back in, check on Dave and see how he's going with the hunt for that skimmer. Hey Sam, hey, so Dave. we've got a skimmer in. I think Excellent. it fits the, uh, the build perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tell me about it. What do we got? So we've got the Mantis Tornado 120. Yes. It's a great budget skimmer. Okay. It's going to fit that sump comfortably and it's going to handle more volume than more that we need to. So we can put a bit extra stock in there when the timing's right. Okay. I like the sound of that. Now you said that it fits the budget. What sort of price are we talking on this unit? These guys go for the mid 400s. Okay. That's not too bad at all. And uh, this one here I see uses the DC pump, but this one is not controllable. I have read that the uh, yep. bigger versions of the Manta skimmers are controllable. What's your thoughts on controlling the pump on a skimmer? Sometimes too much control isn't a good thing. Yeah, fair call. Just let this one run full speed, let it do its yep. job. They've obviously chosen how it should be. They've done the math, the science, they know what's going on, leave it to them. Can't go wrong. And then you've got, it uh, looks like some uh, media up here as well. Yeah, we've got some media here as well, just some bio blocks, um, plenty of surface area. One of these blocks would treat 50 litres super comfortably, yes. but for a light stocking, you get 100, 150 litres per block. So okay. I reckon we start with two and we'll add a couple more later on. See how it goes. All right, great. I'm pretty keen to get this, uh, well, paid for first thing, but then unboxed it in that tank, help it finish off that cycle. Let's do it. All right, here we are with the unboxing right here on the counter at uh, Dave's shop, Deer Park Aquarium, because I want to get this skimmer assembled and on the tank ASAP. Now, I will say that there's a little bit of assembly required, but once you get it together, what a beautiful looking beast it is. This fits the bill so nicely. I love the black, white, and clear color scheme on it. No massive logos, just a down to business, nice little skimmer that's gonna fit into that sump very, very nicely. And I do like the Dave's idea of not going controllable on this one, just having this uh, valve here that you can open and close to raise or lower the water volume in this uh, skimmer body. And also you've got a little bit of control on the actual air inlet itself, but not too much to go wrong, basically set and forget. And you can see here these ceramic bricks that Dave got in for me too, just to give that new bacteria a bit of a housing. Now, here I am setting it up the first time on the tank and you can see straight away I managed to overflow it. And that's because I was sitting the skimmer too far down in the sump. After having a second attempt raising the body up, this is the results we've got. And here it is for the first power on with the skimmer at this particular height. And I've got my hand at the ready to adjust that gate to get it exactly where I want it to be, which when you're first setting up a skimmer, you probably want to set the water height a little bit lower than usual. So I'll be aiming around about that black ring there. That's where I want the bubbles to uh, break up because that way it just gives it a little bit of room when it beds in. Skimmers can be a little bit unpredictable and say their first week or so of operation, just as they get that sort of biofilm and everything sort of settles in. And the last thing you want to do is overflow it when you've got such a uh, beautiful looking sump here. So I've just dialed that in to that sort of point there. And then I can go about just giving this, uh, setting everything back up, putting the controllers back in place, giving a little wipe here where I got a bit of water and stuff about the place. And of course, putting the controller panels back up, making sure the uh, ATO is back in position and ready for business. Now what we're going to do is we'll have a look and I'll show you up close. Look at the bubbles forming in this body here. It is a little bit big at the moment. And like I said, it is a little unpredictable for the first couple of days of operation. What we'll do is we'll let this run at this lower height, let that settle in and we'll check back in in a few days. And as you know, at Deer Park Aquarium, I'm there every Saturday. So I'll give it a week. One week later. And here we are that week later and you can see the bubbles have got much, much finer. We've got a really nice foam going in there and even a little bit of color in the body despite the fact that there's not really much to skim in there at all apart from the breakdown of that uh, live rock and maybe a little bit of ammonia. But all in all, I would say this Manta skimmer has hit the bill perfectly and it looks like it's gonna run an absolute treat. 
All right, guys, there you have it. That is the long overdue update on the cycle of my brand new UN Systems R60 soft coral display tank. It's fantastic to see that the cycle is well and truly underway. And with the addition of that beautiful Mantis skimmer on there, I think that cycle will be complete pretty well any day now. The next step for me is really to save up my dollars and put some big strong light above this tank so I can really get that ugly phase cranking along, make this tank look horrible so it can burn out all those uglies and get it ready to add some cleanup crew and of course our first livestock. One other thing I do want to look into though and as fantastically feature packed as this UN Systems tank is, it does not come with a jump lid and that's something that I definitely like to add to every single tank that I have because realistically the price of one fish jumping out of the tank is the amount of money that it costs you to get a custom lid made or of course you could DIY and save some money but the way this tank looks, it's a piece of living art. I don't want to have some sort of janky DIY jump guard over the top of it. I'm going to go straight to the best in the biz and reach out to my friends at NVS Aquariums to see if they can custom make me a beautiful polycarbonate jump lid to make sure that when this tank is ready for livestock, they stay in the water and not on the floor. Okay guys, I appreciate you all following along with this series. This tank is really shaping up to be something spectacular and I really look forward to taking the knowledge that I've learned over the last 10 to 15 years of reef keeping and really trying to replicate that first tank I had with all of the developments of both the experience and knowledge that I've gained over the last decade and a half, but also the involvement of the hobby itself, the new technology, the new equipment, the new methodologies to make this the best soft coral display I possibly can. And I really think we're on the right step so far. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything at all about this tank, this series, or about this tank or anything else we cover on this channel, feel free to pop it in the comments section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is by far the best way to get hold of me. And I also wanna take the opportunity to give these names on screen here a massive shout out. These are my channel members who very generously chip in a couple of dollars each every single month to make videos like this one possible. And I really do appreciate the support. If you wanna support the channel, but you don't have a couple of dollars a month to spare, fear not, you can hit the subscribe button in the bottom corner down there. That takes two seconds of your time, does not cost a cent today, tomorrow, or ever, but it does help the channel a lot by telling that YouTube algorithm this is good content and it will help recommend it to other like-minded reefers out there. Now, I do have a little bonus video dropping tomorrow, same time, about a brand new reefing product. And just as an added kicker, I've also got a giveaway for all of the Australian viewers in that channel so be sure to stay tuned for that video and of course next weekend Saturday's video will be live from Brisbane at Fragorama Australia's premier aquacultured coral show. I am so excited to be there. Last year was the guy's first attempt at running this show and they absolutely hit it out of the park. So expectations are super high for round two and I think everyone is gonna have a ball. It's such an awesome event and I really look forward to getting around to each and every vendor prior to the doors opening so you guys can see exactly what goods they brought before the whole place gets ravaged by very, very hungry reefers out there. So stay tuned for that video. We'll probably drop about 30 minutes later than I regularly release a video on Saturdays just due to the fact that it will be live. But don't hesitate to join in the live stream and ask your questions on there. I'll be seeing the questions coming through live and I can ask any of the vendors any of the questions you have then. So I really look forward to bringing you that video next weekend. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. Thank Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.